Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember the five functions of management. Management, when you guys will be employed somewhere as managers, you'll be expected to be doing so many things, but they are the core, core functions of management are the ones in this case here that we call by this acronym, POC, POC. So the first function is planning. You must come up with a plan. You must be very good in preparing what we call budgets. You must be very good in organization, coming up with an organization structure, organizing function, organizing function. So you have the structure, you know in this case here who reports to who, who reports to who and ensure that uh, that structure is effective, it is working. Thank you very much. Then we have communications of the same. Communication, communication is a key function, all right? We have in this case here coordination, Coordination, very important. There is no way you will be able to work without uh, proper coordinations. Once you start speaking from two different uh, sides of the mouth, as a, a company, you have in this case here, Dr. William Ruto saying this, and Agashagwa is saying this. Automatically, that means that there will, there will be no proper coordination. Managers must ensure that everything is coordinated. You can disagree, yes, but I mean, you must always ensure that uh, we have the structure, coordination between members in this hierarchy, coordination between what here, coordination between various departments, various departments. That coordination is essential if we are to move forward as an organization. From there, ladies and gentlemen, we have what we call controlling. Controlling, the controlling function. How does this controlling function work? You see, life is funny. You will get at the beginning, and I can see somebody here. At the beginning of the year, there must be a serious ninja here who said, you know what, that I, I will not, in this case here, I will not uh, smoke. I've stopped smoking, but there I should have uh, put uh, the question that I would want to do here up front. The question that I would want to do, the question that I'll be doing so that you can be looking for it. The question that I'll be doing so that you can, you can be looking for it. The question that I will be doing, so I can be looking for it. I want you to look for this question. Yeah, it's November 2017, question number 3B. This is the question that I'll be doing here. November 2017, question number 3B. That's the question that I'll be doing here. AMAS, Advanced Management Accounting, yes. So I would want you to get this question and if possible, please share it with this Ninjas who have a problem with past papers, please share it. November 2017, question number three, boy. Question number three, boy. Question number three, boy. Once you get it, please share it eh, with us in our own sub group. So I was trying to explain something here. In the controlling function, you will get somebody who has been doing this bad behavior. In this case, at the beginning of the year, they normally have what we call resolutions. And among us, there are many resolutions eh, that they will be having in place. It's like, now, how do I get to stop this bad habit? That from today, this 1st of January, uh -huh, 12 a.m., midnight, I would want in this case here to say that now this is behind me. I'll never smoke again. God is gracious. What will happen, ladies and gentlemen, is that eh, if this is the tunnel to heaven, for smoke, non-smokers, for non-smokers, 1st of January, January the whole of it will be doing very well. But after you hit around March there, there will always be that spirit, the bad spirit, which will come and tell you, hey, why don't you smoke just a little bit? And then that will be like it. That will be the last one. So in this case, there is something that is trying to distract you. Something in this case that is bringing issues here, telling you that, hey, get out of the lane a little bit just smoke here, and then once you come back to this non-smoker zone, now it shall be today and forever and forever, amen. You will never smoke. You will never smoke. Ladies and gentlemen, if you try once, what do you think will happen? If you try once, what do you think will happen? What do you think will happen? You will continue, in this case, you're smoking every it's a habit. You now continue smoking every day. And that is why as managers, as managers, you must ensure that you put in control mechanisms and they have to be very strong. These internal controls have to be very strong. Once we have our budgets here, once we have our budgets here, once we have our plan, this is our plan, we must ensure that to be on track, we have very strong controls. 
unarudi ukienda ku deviate kidogo na gonga hapo unarudi unaendelea and that is why the very first thing that i normally teach under this budgetary control is what we call control through measurement using what we call variance analysis so i would want i don't want to show you guys how to come up with budgets first i would want to start it the other way around i would want to start by showing you guys how do we first of all get to compute variances variances so mention there variance analysis variance analysis variance analysis and always remind your colleagues that we are doing advanced management accounting we are doing advanced management accounting it is the paper that actually i taught for so many years eh? this is the paper that i taught for so many years i wanted to run away from it but i can see it is again creeping back but there is no problem i'm able to handle it 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 so variance analysis so what is a variance a variance is a deviation tell us there that a variance is a deviation a deviation between what year a deviation between a deviation between a standard a standard and an actual outcome and an actual outcome it's a deviation difference difference between a standard and an actual outcome a standard is our plan this could be the budget so once you take in this case here a budget we have this budget and then we compare it with our our, our, our actuals we look at the deviations those deviations we shall be calling them what here variances tell us there that there are five types of variances there are five types there are five types of variances there are five types of variances. Number one, we have what we call the material cost variance. Material cost variance. Material cost variance. Number two, we have the material, material, not material, but labor. Labor, labor, cost variance. Labor, cost variance. Number three, we have the variable overheads. Variable overhead, cost variance. Variable overhead, cost variance. Number four, we have the fixed, fixed overhead. Let me write the word overhead in full. Fixed overhead, fixed overhead, cost variance, cost variance. And then number five, we have what we call the sales variances, the sales variances, the sales variances. There are five types of variances. There are five types of variances. We have the material cost variance. We have the labor cost variance. We have the variable overhead cost variance. We have the fixed overhead cost variance. And then we have the sales variances. Once you guys write these five types of variances, can you kindly give me a thumbs up? Give me a thumbs up like that. Gives me a thumb, give me a thumbs up. I can see we are 60 something, quite a small number, but we shall overcome. There are five types of variances. We have variances for material, for labor, variable costs, fixed costs, and sales variances. We shall look at each one of these one at a time. We start with material, material cost variance. We start with material cost variance. Material cost variance. Material cost variance. This is divided into two. This is divided. This is divided. This is divided into two. Uh, Roman one. Material price. Material price variance. Material price variance. And then number two, Roman two, that is, we have what we call the material material usage variance so we have the material price variance is mpv and this is muv material price variance and the material usage variance muv like that so we have material price variance and the material usage variance so this is divided into two 
the material cost variance. Anytime you have a material cost variation, it will be as a result of two things. Either the material prices have changed or the usage has changed. So we have got two things that can make material costs to be different. The difference would be brought about because of the material price changes or the material usage changes, material usage changes. So I will start with the first one. So we start with the first one. How do we get this material price variance? Ladies and gentlemen, here I would want to see whether there is any student that would want to remind us this formula from your intermediate level because you did a May last semester. Most of you did a May last semester. Is there somebody who is able to remember these formulas? Most of you did MA last semester. Most of you did management accounting. Thank you so much, Chogo. That's so good of you. Very good. Very good. Is he the only one who can remember that formula? You know, there is a reason why I started with this. It's because I wanted to connect with what you guys did last semester. Let me ask you a question. Could we be having anybody who did this management accounting long, long time ago, like 10 years ago, like 10 years ago, management accounting like 10 years ago. Oh, Juliana three. Exempted. Lillian four years ago. Lorreen four years, Mary four years ago. 2014, 2014. No cause for alarm. We shall overcome. I will simplify this thing for everybody like, uh, I mean like uh, a toast bread. You know how bread is simple easy to work around with, easy to work around with. So everybody will be at home. So anytime they talk about material price variation, always think about what is it they are subtracting. So material price variance, this is the difference between two prices. Which prices are these? So we have here the price we thought this materials here would have gone at what we are calling the standard price minus the actual price minus the actual price. And then outside here, we shall have here actual quantity of materials that were purchased, that were purchased, that were purchased. So this SP stands for standard price, standard price of materials, standard price of materials. It will be per kilogram per whatever, standard price per kilogram, standard price per kilogram, standard price per kilogram. That is SP. And then AP. AP is not administration police officer. No. AP stands for actual price. AP stands for actual price of materials. Actual price of materials. Actual price of materials. And then, of course, in this case here, AQ is actual quantity. Actual quantity of materials. Actual quantity of materials. Actual quantity of materials that were done what year that were purchased. Actual quantity of materials that were purchased. I would want to, once you guys write up to here, kindly signal me. My handwriting at times is very bad, very, very bad. That's why I always want to see whether we are together with my students. Done, okay. Yeah, my handwriting is very bad. My handwriting is very bad and I'm proud of that. There is no way God can give you everything. You must, for you to be a human being, there must be things which God can't give you. Done. Yes. Yes. Ah, great. I love this. So then let's now open our question here. November 2017, question number 3B. Let's open our question here. November 2017, question number 3B. It was already shared, so I go ahead and read it. I go ahead and read it. It was already shared. This was already shared. So November 2017, question, November 2017, question number 3B. It's a question on Woodmaster. Woodmaster, a Woodmaster. So we are told there, Woodmaster Limited makes quality wooden benches both for indoor and outdoor use. Results have been disappointing in recent years and a new managing director has been appointed in order to boost the production volumes after an initial assessment. After an initial assessment, actually, CP Mora, if you can, please share the same in the WhatsApp group. It will be much better because I know most ninjas can't see this. Most ninjas can't see this. 
But if you share this in WhatsApp group, it will be really seen and most ninjas will appreciate and they'll be very happy. They can even buy you a cup of coffee in the evening. It is there. Thank you so much. After an initial assessment, the director has noted that the budgets had been set at easily achievable levels for employees. He argues that employees would be better motivated by setting budgets that challenge them more in terms of a higher expected output other than changing the overall budgeted output. The director has not yet altered the standard cost card, the budgeted output, and the sales for the month of October 2017 was 4,000 benches. Now, they have given me the standard cost card. Please underline for me the standard cost card because it is out of that standard cost card that I'll be able to get my standard metrics, like the standard price. So that has been given. Look at additional information. Overheads are absorbed on the basis of labor hours and the company uses an absorption costing system. Stocks are valued at standard cost. There were no stocks at the beginning of the month of uh, October 2017. Actual results for the month of October 2017 were as follows. So you see they have given us actual results. Then we have on their side, we have a standard result. results. Our work in variance analysis is very easy. It's to look at the standard vis-a-vis -vis the actual and you subtract. It. So they want us to give them the operating variances, which are five types. So we shall start with the material variances. And the first one, don't write anything. The first material variance for you to compute is what we call the material price variance. Price variation. So it is standard price minus actual price multiplied by actual quantity purchased. Actual quantity purchased. So then I would want you guys now that uh, you are great ninjas, I would want you guys to look for that information. When they say standard, you throw your eyes to the standard cost card. You pick a figure there, write it there. When they say actual, go to the actual information given on this other table on note three. Note three. Don't even tell me the language of exempted that, that you did this in four, five. No, no, no. Just put any figures there. Even if you are wrong, even if you are wrong, I would want students who are very courageous. Put figures there. Even if you are wrong. Like now I can see Chogo saying standard price is 32. Put figures there. Put your figures. Of course, you can see in the standard card, there is a place they are talking about material. Uh -huh. There is a place they are talking about material. So go to materials, pick the standard price. So the standard price, ladies and gentlemen, from the materials, from the materials, you know, there are two things there. You will get somebody in this case here saying standard price for wood. You see wood is the material, right? Wood. The ladies who are here, you know, ladies who are here, I'm not undermining you, but uh, at times, you know, wood is our material. You should not be confused at all, like in the construction industry. Don't be confused at all. Wood is a raw material. And then we have the others now following very easily labor. So like now under wood, I can see under wood, ladies and gentlemen, we have 25 kilograms and each goes for 32 per kilogram. So the standard price per kilogram there is 32. Then throw your eyes to the actual cost card. To the actual cost card, is there somebody who is able to see the actual price of materials per kg? Is there anybody who is able to see the actual price of materials per kg? Actual cost card, given in note three, given in note number three, given in note number three, given in note number three, the actual is 35, isn't it? Thank you so much. From there, ladies and gentlemen, is there anybody who is able to see the actual quantity, not of units that were produced, but the actual quantity of raw materials that were purchased, the actual quantity of this wood? Is there somebody who can see the actual quantity of wood that was purchased? Actual quantity of wood purchased. Yeah, it must be in kilograms, isn't it? It must be in kilograms, yes, because these are prices per kilogram. So you're right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this gives me 8,000 kilograms. 8,000 kilograms. So then is there somebody who will be able, ladies and gentlemen, to give me the variance? So you open your brackets here. Open your brackets nicely. Say 32 minus 35 close times 8,000. Give me an answer. Give me an answer. What are we getting there? What are we getting there? Actual quantity purchase is given there in brackets under wood. 240,000 negative. Eh? So they're telling me, Mualimu, it is 240,000. We shall not be having negatives and positives here. 
So if it is negative, that is very bad for the business. That is profit reducing. That's very bad for the business. So if it's negative, you don't say negative here. If it's negative, you simply come and write here the word adverse or just A. You write the word adverse, adverse, or just A, or just A, adverse, adverse. It's negative. So it's adverse for the business. Why? Because we had thought would buy these materials at a cheaper price. We thought would buy this at 32, but we have ended buying this at a higher price of 35. So we have spent more, although we don't go into those kind of interpretations, for us is to know when it's negative, it's adverse. When if it's uh, positive, it's favorable. When it's positive, it is favorable. When it's positive, it is favorable. So is that okay, ladies and gentlemen? Is that okay? Can I go to the next type of material cost variance? Yeah, so in this case here now, we are looking at the material usage variance, the second one, the second one here. So under operating variances, you will not be told by the examiner which ones to compute. It's you to know. We, are, we will start with material cost variance, of which I've been able to do the first one there, Roman 1. And then I'll come and give them what we call the material usage variance. So this material usage variance is a quantity variance. It is a quantity variance. It's a quantity variance. Quantity variance. And how do we get it? Anytime they want us to give them material usage variance, we shall be taking standard quantity minus actual quantity. It's a quantity variance. It's a, a difference between two quantities. So standard quantity minus actual quantity. And then, of course, at the end of the day, we must monetize. When you're putting money outside, it shall be standard. One thing you're going to realize, and this thing is very, very consistent. If it's money you're putting outside, then money must be standard. But if it's quantity you are putting outside, these are things you'll be able to know as we progress. If it's quantity you are putting on hours you're putting outside, then they have to be actual. actual. But if it's money you're putting outside the bracket, it must be what here? It must be standard. It must be standard. It must be standard. I love this. So just like Ugali, you know, like Ugali, like the men who are here, I mean, we many, many times make mistakes, like when our families are not around. So in this case here, you look at her, uh, some flour, flour that you have at home, this flour that you have at home, unga yogali. So you thought in this case you would use one kilogram, ukiweka, I don't realize you unga maji mezidi. You end up in this case here using more. So it means that you are inefe inefficient. So this basically is an efficiency variance for raw materials, for raw materials. Where you'll be looking at what <laughs> yeah, uh, material, sorry, sorry, how did I forget this? But when we began, I told you this. This is called material usage variance. Material usage variance. When we began, this must be, a student who has just joined us, just like this is material price variance. So you must have what you call the standard. Thank you very much, Arem. So we have here the standard quantity minus AQ into standard price. So in full, this is standard quantity for actual production. Please never forget this. Standard quantity for actual production. And this is actual quantity of materials than what here, actual quantity of materials that were used. Actual quantity of materials that were used. Actual quantity of materials that were used. So remember this SQ a standard quantity of materials, of materials. This AQ is actual quantity, is actual quantity of materials. As P, we are repeating this, is standard price of materials. Standard price of materials. Now, I would want to give you one minute. You try plugging in your numbers, we see how they look like here. Just try plugging in your numbers and then we get to see how it shall look like here. Just try plugging in your numbers and then we get to see how it shall look like. How it shall look like. How it shall look like. Don't worry getting it wrong. I wish you knew my aim. Even my beliefs in life. I believe in 
making as many mistakes as possible. I believe in trying. I believe in the mantra of, uh, I mean, there is no learning without things. There is no learning without character development. Without character development, there's no learning. You can't in this case have to be, I mean, be, be, be very straight, getting it right every time. Yes, standard quantity, standard quantity for actual production or off, doesn't matter. Standard quantity for actual production minus actual quantity that was used, multiplied outside there by standard price. Let's try. Let's put in whatever numbers you'll be able to put around there. Or you'll be able to rub, you can even use a pencil because I want you to harden in terms of uh, knowing which figures should you pick, which are correct. I want you to harden in that area. Very many students are quite soft here. They write a formula, but uh, because of softness, they do not know what to pick and what to leave. Great. I like it because now I'm seeing different answers. When I see different answers, learning is about to take place. The only ninja I don't like when I'm training them in a hard way is that ninja, when I'm teaching so seriously like this, they are eating something. Worst of it all, Ugali. Those ninjas here are very, very bad. Those are very, very bad ninjas. Yeah, yeah. Those are bad ninjas. Those are bad ninjas. I stopped. Great. <laughs> Great. So thank you so much. Thank you for trying. Thank you for trying. So first of all, we shall pick the standard quantity from the standard card. So from the standard card, I can see wood is 25 kilograms. It's 25 kilograms wood. But you see that 25 is per unit. 25 is per unit. And I would want this to be for all the units that were produced. Is there somebody who is able to see the actual production? Remember these guys were producing benches. Are, are they benches? Is there somebody who is able to see how many benches were actually? Look at the total production cost. Is there somebody who is able, is it 4,000? Or 3,600. Uh-huh. How many benches were produced in total? How many benches? Is there somebody who is able to see the number of uh, benches that were produced? The number of benches that were produced? You see, 4,000 is budgeted output. 4,000 is budgeted output. It's given... On the table before, before the standard, they've told us the budgeted output and sales for the month of October 2017 was 4,000. That's very good of you, but you see the 4,000 for sure is what we budgeted to produce. That can't be the actual production. Uh -huh. So if you want actual, go to note number three, where you'll be able to get the actual production. And never confuse actual production with actual sales. Now there is a lot of learning going to take place here. A lot of learning to take place here because you may produce more, but you sell less, especially when you have inventory. Like these ninjas, these ninjas, we can see under total production, they produced 3,600. And then the closing stock is given there as 400. So they sold what here? 3,200. I'm not missing my words here. This is standard quantity for actual production. So it will be 25 times 3,600. Minus the actual quantity of raw materials. Here again, some black rangers, they normally bring here actual output. Yeah, they'll tell you that at minus 36, it doesn't even make sense. This is a material variance. So this is actual quantity of materials that were used. Is there somebody who is able to see from the actual information? Not number three. Yeah, in this case here, we don't have stocks of raw materials. So actual quantity of raw materials used were 8,000. Then again, throw you, it's about throwing your eyes all over. It's about throwing your eyes all over. So again, you throw your eyes to the standard cost card. Standard cost card, you should be able to read for me the standard price of this wood per kg. The standard price of this wood per kg. Is there somebody who is able to see that? So they're telling me, Mwalimu, this is 32. I can tell you guys. Of course, most of you guys were wrong here. But given you you trying, the learning is at another level. Given that you tried, given that, that you tried, it's at another level. Given that you tried, it's at another level. So come and open brackets here, 25 times 3,600. 
minus 8,000, close brackets, times 32. If it's positive, then the answer is favorable. The answer you get, you simply designate it as favorable. If it's negative, you shall be able to call it what here? Adverse. Adverse. So 320,000. I can see people are still confused there with adverse favorable. Is it positive? Is it positive? Is it positive? Is it positive? If it's positive, then you simply mention they are favorable or you simply write F, favorable. If it's positive, you say favorable. Thank you very much, Pamela. You say favorable. Thank you very much, Winnie. Favorable. 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 So I'm so sure that this will make lots of sense as we progress. But at least I've been able to compute the material cost variances. Material cost variance are two. We have the material price variance and the material usage variance. With your permission, I'll be able to go to the second type of variances. Is that, you know, we said when we started, we said we have got five types of variances. We've been able to dispense with the material variances. Now we do the labor variances. So labor variances are divided into two. So now we are on the second one, labor. Labor variances. Labor or labor cost variances. Labor cost variances. So these are divided into two. So Roman one, we have here, so divided into two. Divided into two. So Roman one, we have what we call labor rate variance. Labor rate variance, labor rate variance, and then Roman two, we have in this case here what we call labor efficiency, labor efficiency variance, labor efficiency variance. So, labor rate, this happens even at RCM quite a lot. We had planned, for example, like now this semester, we only planned, for example, to pay our lecturers at a certain rate. And then from nowhere, you get students, in this case here, recommending uh, that their colleagues, I mean, you get like our numbers are doubling. So assuming you had a plan to pay a lecturer, say 3,000 shillings per session, and then you're getting, in this case here, students doubling. So when they double like that, what do you do? Of course, you can't double the rate. You must protect the business as a director, but at least you have to increase the, the wages. So the standard rate vis-a-vis -vis the actual rate will not be the same at the end of the year. So then the director will come to ask me, for example, okay, I'll be able to go back to that, uh, Sherry, you came in late when I just rubbed, but I'll go back to that. Now, remember, remember, remember here. So you have standard rate, 3,000. Actual rate, 4,500. So at the end of the year, then you'll be able to see like, I mean, we had planned to have this as labor and the actual labor is so high. What happened? Then I'll be able to come and explain to these directors and tell them, hey, we increase the rate. So the first component is called the labor rate variance, LRV. This is L-E-V, like that. So before I answer Sherry, labor rate variance, labor rate variance is difference between two rates, standard rate minus actual rate. Outside here, we have actual hours actual hours. So anytime they want us to give them the labor rate variance, it will be the difference between our standard rate and the actual rate multiplied by actual hours. So remember that this SR is standard rate per hour. The standard, I'll be able to get this from the standard cost card. And then we have this AR is actual rate, actual rate per hour. Actual rate per hour. Actual rate per hour. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would want to see whether there is anybody like Sherry. I would want you to go ahead and uh, in this case here, we have AH, which is actual hours. I would want you to go ahead and uh, just plug in. And then we argue out as I answer you. So, standard rate minus actual rate into actual hours. Into actual hours into actual hours, labor rate variance. Chogo, thank you very much. That's very correct. I can see a very serious ninja here. This guy called Chogo, I've never taught him. This is a very, very new name to me, but I can see he's a serious ninja. I can see he's a serious ninja.
But go ahead and give me your answer. Everybody should give me an answer. So like Umu, Manaya, huh? Natasha, 160,000 favorable. Please give me your answers. Don't feel shy. Never be shy as an accountant. If you're shy, you should have done another career, not accounting. Yeah, it's an, I mean, it's somewhere we should be able to meet. I mean, argue out as much as possible. Argue out. I'm so happy because even the guys who told me that they were exempted from management accounting, now I can see they are getting correct answers. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> so we start with the standard rate. Let's start with the standard rate. So please go to your standard cost card. The one given up there, the plan, the standard cost card, the one given there, you'll be able to see labor four hours and each hour is 80. So the standard rate is 80 per hour. 80 per hour go to once you see actual throw your eyes to the actual throw your eyes to the actual so the actual rate in the labor there you can see it is 70 the actual rate in the labor there is 70 so come here multiply this by the actual hours so actual hours here sherry is very easy actual hours you'll be able to see the they're given there in note number three actual hours were sixteen thousand. note number three actual hours were sixteen thousand actual hours was 16,000. So this is what these guys are doing to get 160,000. And because it's positive, it becomes favorable. We had thought we would pay more. We had planned to pay 80, but we saved very bad for quality. We should never ever try to reduce wages. When you reduce wages, it's very, very, even if you're you getting a favorable, the end long run result will not be very good. Will not be very good. So, Sherry, before I answer you, your question, are you comfortable first with this? Are you comfortable with this? Ah, very easy. So, we go to labor efficiency variance. Ladies and gentlemen, in Kenya here, how many tribes are we in Kenya? How many tribes do we have in Kenya? Is there somebody who could easily tell me the number of tribes? Are they 42? Are they not 43? Yeah, they should be 43. They should be 43. Oh, somebody is uh, not even bringing in these other funny, funny tribes which were brought uh, in the other day. No, we are 43. Now, amongst those 43 tribes, which tribe for sure, in terms of business, would you rate to be very, as very, very efficient? Which tribe would you vote for to be the most efficient tribe in business? Okuyu, Okuyu. <laughs> So Mali, they are coming up very well. Okuyu there. <laughs> Kikuyu all the way. Luo, Kisi. <laughs> Don't vote for your tribe. Don't vote for your tribe. Ladies and gentlemen, never ever should you forget. The most efficient tribe, yes, Dennis, the most efficient tribe in Kenya here, and actually globally, it is the Indians. It is only Indians who start to look at businesses along River Road and the Jugo Road. Do you know some of those businesses are 200 years old? They're able to pass their businesses to generations. We guys, I mean, even if you count them kisses, in this case here, uh, Luos, Kikuyus, I'm telling you, most of us are very, very stupid. And I normally tell them, in most of these uh, ISPAC meetings we go, we only produce, like now, Aura here is so seriously trying to build a very big college, but if Aura dies today, unfortunately, is, is in that stupidity. And how do we lose it out? You'll get like, for example, our kids, you'll come and say, that, let my kids do any course they want. In India, it doesn't work like that. You'll get a family of medics. If you get one person, in this case, you're trying to go astray, maybe they do BCOM, and it's a, a, a family of uh, medics. That, that kid will do BCOM, but to come and manage their, be, their business. You'll get somebody who is doing very good business, like jewelry business. And then, for example, when their kids are closed, like now a daughter will come, for example, to their shop. They will not even allow that daughter to touch nothing. They'll be told, you go and sit and read. So in this case here, somebody who's doing very well in jewelry business, I mean, who has known all the loopholes, who has known all the networks, where they can source these things from Dubai. It, they don't want to sell that idea to there. Is that what you guys are telling me is uh, being a genius? I mean, why do you die and lose all that track? So kama mimi naangalia kwa trauma kisema nataka kwa daktari mimi naangalia kuombana jua wajui. Ukifika form 2 
na kubukia paper moja ya ACC. ACC they allow you to book people who are under age. So unaanza kufanya na by the time unamaliza form 4 unamaliza ACC karibu yote. And then I ensure that you are a good public speaker. By the time I hit 50, one of them should be able to hit this thing running. That's how we can be able to build something in the, that's what we call succession planning. But most of us we try to say succession we are not very good at that. And that you, you'll be asked that question in leadership and management. All right? These family businesses, most of the family businesses, they collapse simply because we don't prepare the next generation to take from us. You'll get yourself, in this case, you're coming from Kajiado, your father is so good in matters of cows. This guy is a rich man, but you are here working so hard with CPA to break, in this case, your virgin areas. International disaster, international disaster, international disaster, international disaster we shall overcome. So anytime we talk about that tribe, which is very, very efficient, anytime you hear of efficiency variance, efficiency variance, always you shall think about Mr. Shah. Anytime we talk about efficiency variance, all the other tribes know it is the Shahs who are efficient. Never forget about this. Yeah, it is the shares. So it is standard hours minus actual hours. Standard hours minus actual hours. The other tribes were very good, but we only create wealth for our generation alone. Look at the Jenga Karumes. The kids are fighting in courts. Look at the who is who. The who is who. International disaster. <laughs> so we have here Mr. Shah. Mr. Shah. So we have here, this SH is standard hours for actual production. For actual production. We have a H, actual hours. Actual hours. SR. SR is the standard rate. SR is the standard rate. SR is the standard rate. <laughs> okay, Umu, when I'm there, let me see. How old are you, Umu? Umu, was there. How old are you? <laughs> we shall overcome. 28 years, you there. Okay. <laughs> 28 when I'm young, sir. <laughs> Very young. <laughs> so, Sha, Sha, Sha. Anytime you hear about efficiency, it is always the sharp principle. The sharp principle. Times what we call standard rate like that. So Sherry, now I'm on your back, Sherry. I would want to see whether Sherry, without even me answering your question that you had asked out there, I would want to see whether you can substitute properly here. So Sherry, please give me the answer here. Sherry, I'm waiting for you. I would want to see whether, yeah, this is a junior person, 28. You are so junior. Ah, Choko has given me the answer here. <laughs> I wanted this answer to come from Sherry. <laughs> but we shall overcome. We shall overcome. Because this is very similar to the material usage. But Patrick, thank you very much for giving me a different answer. I love students like this. These are the students who are bold. Who are bold. Who are bold. Remember, AMA is a bit different. No, AMA, let me tell you something. AMA is quite a, a bad paper. It can only be good to you, just like AFM. I would rank AMA and AFM same level. You really have to get involved. You must get involved. You must get involved. So standard hours, standard hours, standard hours, standard hours. So please go to labor. So the labor, the hours given there under the standard card are four. So I will take four. Sherry, I hope you are able to see this. These are four standard hours for actual production, for the number of benches that we actually produced. You know, we are producing, we aren't producing wood. We are producing benches. And the actual production, Juliana, you are a good student. The actual number of benches we produced there was 3,600. Minus the actual hours. Please go to the actual information, not number three. Actual information, not number three. Actual information, note number three. Actual information, note number three, 
we can see the actual labor hours. They were 16,000. These were 16,000. These were 16,000, like this. Times standard rate. This is standard rate per hour. So you throw your eyes to the standard card. The standard card, you can see the standard rate, which is money now, which is money now. The standard rate there, ladies and gentlemen, is what here? Is 80. The standard rate is 80. The standard rate is 80. The standard rate is 80 like that. So then are you able to substitute there? And then you give me the correct answer now. Give me the correct answer. And the one who has learned most is the one who gave me a different answer. So they're giving me 128,000 and because it's negative, it's adverse. Remember when you're marking if you omit this or if this is wrong, the entire answer is wrong. 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 So Sherry, are you able to follow now this one before I go back to the one that you asked? Sherry went to mute. Great. So do you still want me to go back to the other one or now you are comfortable? No. Thank you so much. I knew because they are very similar. So you see, these are so many marks you are getting even without knowing what you are doing. Once they mention the one to operating variances, you must always remember those five. So I've been able to do the material. You've been able to do the labor. Now we go to the variable variances. Mention their variable overhead cost variances. With your permission, I'll grab this and I know there is a ninja who is not seeing anything totally, but we shall overcome. This is not hard. Trust you me. Even an exam, you will start with this question and it must be there. It must be there. So number three, number three, it is the variable overhead cost variances. Variable overhead cost variances. Variable overhead cost variances. So these are divided into two. They are divided into two. Roman one, we have variable overhead efficiency efficiency variance variable overhead efficiency variance variable overhead efficiency variance and then number two we have variable overhead expenditure expenditure variance so variable overhead efficiency variance and the variable overhead expenditure variance the question, sorry, MJ, today you are late, which is not usual. It is this one here. November 2017, question 3B. November 2017, question number 3B. November 2017, question number 3B. Then we'll have to make an agreement. If you want Mualimu to take this class, remember, I don't teach classes, even in classes, which are less than 200 students. So you guys must get out of your way and the pool students really to give Mualimu some number here that will be able to do what here to compensate Mualimu. Of course, you know, at my age, level of qualifications and hard work, I am at uh, the, which, which level? The level of a, a PWC partner, PWC partner. So a PWC partner should be earning how much per hour? I love numbers, yes. 28 years, okay. <laughs> you can see E and K there. <laughs> so you really, really, like Baba, no, 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 just PWC partner. Because you now most of the people that I've taught, most of the people who are my age mates right now, they're partners in this big, big organization. So when I take up a class, I need to get something very good. So that I can also get some money to be giving my students as I teach her. Eh? Otherwise, I start class. One of the other start class. You must kill me. Class, you must kill me. You make a ta. Class, you must kill me. Make a ta. So, you must have responsibility. You have to make sure that class is over 200. The class is over 200. Then now, Mwalimu will even introduce more sessions because this session should be three. They should be three. Yeah. <laughs> oh, as a father, no, Frida, bring in, bring in, bring in more students here to come here. Bring in more students to come here. Ndiyo mwalimu wakitoka hapa jameni, hata naeza karunua kikombe moja ya maji. Kikombe moja ya maji. Tafadhali. Great, great. So then we are here. Variable overhead, efficiency variance. Ukisikia tu jina, anywhere ukisikia jina efficiency, hata kama uandastande chochote. 
Wewe kumbuka always Mr. Shah. Mr. Shah ni very efficient. Very efficient. These Wendy's some of them are my friends. These guys don't even waste time. It will be very hard for you to pata Mwindi kamaenda kama Mwafrika kwa club. Anakaa kwa club the whole day. Unajua Mwafrika sisi hata tuna time. Unajua ukiona Mwindi ameenda kwa club in most cases either amefanya very well in business. There, there must be some occasion they are celebrating. But uh, we Kenyans uh, even Kenyans we are better off ukienda wa neighbors here in Tanzania. Yeah, every day at a lunch hour anakunywa kitu yake. <laughs> no time. So Indians these guys are very good. When you even when you work with them, you'll be able to realize that these guys are really dedicated in whatever they do. They are very what here, they are very efficient. They are very, very efficient. They are very, very efficient. So variable overhead efficiency variance, every time it will be Mr. Shah. So then what you need to do here is to come and introduce your standard variable overheads per hour. Standard variable, standard variable overheads per hour. So this is standard variable overheads per hour per hour so i would want to keep silent a little bit and then i get to see whether there is anybody remember this is just standard hours for actual the normal one the ones used for labor standard hours for actual production standard hours for actual production these are actual hours everything already you have apart from this here is where we have a slight problem which I would want to see whether uh, Juliana, there is, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. There is somebody who is asking a question that I was not really. Monyoncho, yes. This man from Kisi, this man from Kisi, this man from Kisi is asking about, I'm not getting the 3,000. If you go to note number three, Monyoncho, note number three, you'll be able to see total production cost. We have wood, labor, Variable overheads, fixed overheads, and then total production costs there, you'll be able to see 3,600 benches were produced. Were produced. So, abracadabra. Waja tuone maajabu hapo sasa. Abracadabra. Waja tuone maajabu hapo sasa. Abracadabra. So, standard hours for actual production, if you go to the variable overheads, you will be able to see the standard hours given there. They'll always be the same as standard hour, standard labor hours. So it is four. So we have four hours, but here are so many guys confused. Remember, it is standard hours, but multiplied with the number of benches that were actually produced, which were 3,600 minus the actual hours. You go to the other side of uh, this, you can see there variable overheads, no hours given. I will not panic. I will always use the actual labor hours. So the actual labor hours were how many? Is there somebody who is able to see the actual labor hours? Is there anybody who is able to see the actual labor hours? Anybody who is able to see the actual labor hours? Abracadabra. Actual labor hours. Yeah. Are they for Ruth? No. No, actual. Actual. Ruth, me some happy actual. Go to note number three. You may some the standard Ruth, where, where, but we shall overcome. I'm happy. You're a good ninja. You're making moves. You know, ninja, ninja who is about making moves making moves. So in this case, the labor, uh, actual labor hours there are 16,000. Sasa, wanafunzi hapa, is standard variable overheads per hour? Ebu niambini ngapi? Standard variable overheads per hour. Are you able to see the standard variable overheads per hour? Are you able to see them? The standard variable, uh, go back to the standard cost cut, and you'll be able to see their standard variable overheads per hour. Yes, they are 40. They are 40 there. So times 40. If you're getting negative, if you're getting negative, if you're getting negative, you're getting negative, then automatically it's adverse. It's adverse. Ah, great. 64,000 adverse. 64,000. 64,000 adverse. 64,000 adverse. So that is what, that's what you call variable overhead efficiency variance. That's the first component here. Variable overhead efficiency variance. And then number two, ladies and gentlemen, we have what we call the variable, variable overhead expenditure variance. Expenditure variance. Which reminds me the other day, Lienda Kwa Daktari. So this doctor, I was simply trying to look for a meal plan. Like, I mean, at my height, I should not be approaching 90 kilograms. I told him, no, no, no. So then I would want you to give me a meal plan. So he was trying to look at these things slowly and angalia. 
anasema ati uh, 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 iko na energy level ngapi gani so akaniambia ma carbohydrates tuanze ku drop akaniambia kama ni mayai kula mayai mingi kula nyama mingi proteins mingi so akaniambia namna hii namna hii so ikafika kama tunda fulani akasema avocado is very good uh, 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 fat but be taking just one piece ah nikaona mbaya sana because avocado ni rafiki yangu sana avocado so e variable overhead expenditure variance ni hesabu ya avocado kupata variable overhead nikasikia vibaya sana lakini hiyo siwezi nikawacha sana so anytime unataka nipate variable overhead expenditure variance variance what unachukua standard variable overhead per hour times actual hours minus avo 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 for avocado avo minus avo minus avo minus avo for avocado for avocado minus avo for avocado hii haina ma brackets hii hii haina ma brackets hii haina ma brackets hii haina ma brackets so you get to variable over and expand it you want to spend fine but i mean you can't eat this you can't eat this hata avocado atingoa hata avocado ngone kamwambia hapana avocado sio mbaya sana avocado sio mbaya sana sasa tu unapenda avocado kusema kweli si unapenda avocado kusema kweli si avocado ni mzuri aki sasa tayari kuongea sababu sasa wamesikia kwamba ya avocado ni manori yangu hii overheads like actual variable overheads <laughs> actual variable overheads so that i would want to give you guys one minute you try this out for me please give me this answer then we see please give me this answer we see variable overhead expenditure you are simply you have everything you guys have everything you guys have everything <laughs> you guys have everything thank you so much you guys now have everything now you have everything now you have ah how comes i'm not seeing all questions today the questions are passing remember please when i don't see when i don't get to see your question you should always like try to tag it uh, tag it down simply put it down every time until i see it until i see it it will be very good for me to answer all questions i will need to answer all not uh, some but all questions all questions and we reward students who ask questions and we shall reward all students who ask questions we shall reward students who ask questions we shall reward students who ask questions so from lilian from leo leo is leo short form for leonard from uh, mukavale achesa 40000 favorable great 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 so the gentlemen this is where we are the standard variable overhead per hour the standard variable overhead per hour so you will go there you can see variable overhead there chogo you asking whether it's 4 or 40 you see it's 4 hours at shillings 40 per hour don't divide again don't divide uh, uh, don't divide again hapo ni mona giza thank you very much more at least to me recognize something so standard variable overhead per hour ni 40 actual labor hours you guys gave me information you guys have given me you guys have given me information you guys have given me information there about actual labor hours there are 16000 remember these figures have not chopped any three zeros so minus the actual variable overheads are given there in note number 3 there are 600000 remember those figures are thousands these are 600 so it's either you chop zeros here or you add those zeros back there 600000 avo seems tricky you see avo is actual variable overheads na ukienda pale kwa variable overhead so umetuandikia pale ama mimi ndio naona giza so umetuandikia pale variable overhead 600 so 600000 600000 edward are you able to see that 600000 are you able to see that 600000 kuna nuru gizani yes so they are telling me it is 40000 they are telling me the final answer is 40000 favorable 40000 favorable 40000 favorable 40000 favorable 40000 favorable i can't see 6000 great i can't see 
remember this is 16, eh? 16, these are actual hours, actual labor hours. If you look at labor, in the brackets, we have 16,000 we need. And then if you look at note number three, variable overheads, we have 600. Not four, good questions there. So we need, are you able to see that 600, 600,000? It's 600 alone, but remember those figures are in shillings thousands. They're in shillings thousands. Now, Lorene is asking, why are we using 40 and not four? Good question there. You know, these are standard variable overheads for each hour. So Kenya shillings per hour, Kenya shillings per hour, Kenya shillings per hour. So those four, what are those four? Those four, if you look at these four very well, those are hours, four hours, rain. But you want in this case here, shillings what here? 40 per hour. You want a cost. You see, normally they give you like uh, standard hours and a standard rate. All right. So remember this, what we want here is a standard variable over which, which is money, you know, money per hour. So you see, it's, you, you can't say four hours per hour. You can't say four hours per hour. It is 40 per hour. I don't know whether Lorena, you are able to see that. It has to be in terms of money. This has to be in terms of money. Shillings 40 per hour. It is not four hours per hour. Lorena, I don't know whether we are together, but we shall overcome. All right. All right. Now, from there, we go to the last segment for today. The last segment for today. Once I finish this segment, then I'll say I've worked. I've worked. I've worked. Even if time will not be over, I will say I've worked. I will say I have worked. So we go to the last one. That's number four. Last one for today, that is. Last one is what we call the fixed overhead cost variance fixed overhead cost variance fixed overhead cost variance so these are again you know all these normally are come in twins double 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 yeah. so divided into two divided into two like that roman one we have fixed overhead we have fixed overhead Fixed overhead, fixed overhead, expenditure variance. Fixed overhead, expenditure variance. And then number two, we have fixed overhead, fixed overhead, fixed overhead, volume, volume variance. Fixed overhead, volume variance. Fixed overhead, volume variance. Me na penda sana fixed overhead expenditure variance. Na penda sana. Na penda sana fixed overhead expenditure variance. Because, because anytime I remember this, anytime I see this, I remember politics in Western Kenya. And there is one politician who used to be really prolific. I'm going to be fully wakoli. Nyamwezo mujiwa sana. Before we were calling, it was very dangerous. Yeah, classroom teacher who really came to politics and was able to do quite a lot. But unfortunately, things uh, fell against him. So anytime they talk about fixed overhead expenditure value, variance, I'd always think about this guy, BFO minus at a tolly and angrily upper, at a tolly and angrily upper, and guy in the F, like in the junior tolly. Here, variable, your fixed overhead expenditure variance. Near before and at like that, like that. Oh, is your neighbor great? <laughs> great. So then you will never forget how to compute this variance. You will never for forget how to compute this variance for sure. You will never forget how to compute this variance. So this BFO, BFO stands for budgeted. Budgeted fixed overheads. Budgeted fixed overheads. And then AFO stands for actual fixed overheads. Actual fixed overheads. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so budgeted fixed overheads and actual fixed overheads. Actual fixed overheads. Actual fixed overheads. 
atrophic overheads. All right. So then I would want to give you guys one minute. I'm so sure this is a bit dangerous, but I'm 100% sure that somebody will be able to get this right. I'm 100% sure that somebody will be able to get this right. 100% sure that somebody will be able to get this right. Because I don't have a problem with R4. R4, which is the actual fixed overhead, that one I can see it. It is the year that I was born. The actual fixed overhead is I can see that one. Actual fixed overhead is I can see that one. Is there somebody who is able to see the actual fixed overhead? I don't have a problem with actual fixed overhead. Just go to note number three. Actual fixed overhead is everybody will be able to see that. 1960, yes. 1960, Ruth, Umenda, opposite, like you shall overcome. The actual, kiske in actual, unenda kwa actual table. You don't always be given two tables. Actual table is the one that is in the additional information or three. So actual fixed overheads pale in 1960. But now we have in this case here the standard fixed overheads. Ambazo nizo Pamela, not Pamela, but uh, this great lady, ametupatia pale kama 640. Izo Ruth ametupatia pale kama 640. Fixed overhead 640. Mm, mm, great. So I want to be silent a little bit to get to see whether there is any ninja who will be able to give us correctly, correctly, this variable overheads. Correctly. Not a variable, but fixed. Budgeted fixed overheads. Not an easy one. Not an easy one. Not an easy one. So first of all, you are supposed to know that eh, not unless you are told otherwise, the standard cost card is for producing one bench. Standard cost card is for producing one bench. So each bench, in terms of fixed overheads, each bench will cost us 640. Each bench will cost us 640. Each bench will cost us 640. So I'm looking at budgeted fixed overheads. So this will be the standard fixed overheads for a unit times the budgeted output. Very crazy, but we shall understand it. Times budgeted output, budgeted output. So the standard fixed overheads per unit, the standard fixed overheads per unit, we can see is not per hour. This is 640. Times budgeted output, not many students will be able to see how many benches were budgeting to produce. Not many, not many. Up there, don't go to the uh, actual information. Up there, you'll be able to see them telling us budgeted output for this month were 4,000 benches, 4,000 benches. So then here we have 640 times 4,000 minus 1960,000. Return those three zeros, otherwise you get a zero. Or you make this to be in terms of thousands. You can come and say divide this by 1,000 for compatibility. So whatever answer you get, Come and give me, tell it to me whether it is negative or rather whether it's favorable or adverse. Whether it's favorable or adverse. Whether it's favorable or adverse. So they're getting 600,000 favorable. They're getting 600,000. This one I will repeat. Not once, not twice, not thrice. This I have to repeat severally. I have to repeat severally. So that's what we call fixed overhead expenditure variance, fixed overhead, expenditure variance. The very last one for today is what we call the fixed overhead volume variance. Fixed overhead volume. Fixed overhead volume variance. Fixed overhead volume variance. So then this is standard or rather budgeted volume. Budgeted volume. Minus actual volume multiplied by standard fixed overheads per unit. So somebody has given me the budgeted volume, budgeted volume. Somebody has told me it's 4,000. Budgeted volume. Somebody has given me a figure of 4,000. How about the actual volume? How about the actual volume? How about the actual volume? 
How about the actual volume? How about the actual volume? 3,600 years. 3,600 years. So times the standard fixed overheads per unit that you guys have given me a figure of 640. 640. 640. So you say there into brackets, 4,000 minus 3,600, whatever you get times 640, you give me an answer. You give me an answer. Please give me an answer. Please give me an answer. So it is 256,000, 256,000, 256,000. We can take without adverse or favorable, you get a wrong. Can take a figure, just 256,000, you get a wrong. It's supposed to be 256,000 with something. It's supposed to be 256,000 with something. 256,000 with something. And the something is adverse, not favorable. 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 Ah, most of them are very silent. Am I, am I right or am I wrong? I move, okay, sorry. Am I right? You know, I, I always keep on telling you that, ladies and gentlemen, here we are colleagues, and we should be able to, we should be able to argue out. You can imagine, you had budgeted to produce a volume of four thousand, and then you produce less. You had planned to produce four thousand, and then you had produced, you have produced thirty six hundred actually. Will that make you happy? I think Ninja is always right. No, no. <laughs> Will that make you happy? Will that make you happy? The budget to produce more, you produce less. Will that make you happy? Ah, you guys don't want to tell me no. Of course, no, isn't it? No. That's why it's what here. It is adverse. It's adverse. Normally, this concept of exceptional, we have what we call exceptional variances. There are normally three. Exceptional. Exceptional variances exceptional variances are normally three number one we have the fixed overhead volume fixed overhead volume variance is exceptional number two we have fixed overhead capacity i'll be showing you how it is calculated fixed overhead capacity variance is exceptional and then number three we have all sales variances all sales variances are exceptional. Exceptional doesn't mean that they are very hard to compute. Exceptional basically means that uh, exceptional adjust the board. Allah, amani mimi. Kunomalia muoni vizuri. Kunomalia muoni vizuri. Kunomalia waoni vizuri. Maybe, maybe ni mikono mefunika. But this one is should be, maybe you guys should be able to see this. Yeah. Great. So when they are exceptional, when they are exceptional, ladies and gentlemen, please listen. It means that we shall be interpreting them in the opposite way. We shall be interpreting them in the opposite way. When I get a positive, I will be taking that as an adverse. When I get a positive, I shall take that as an adverse. These three. So whenever I'm computing any of the three, when I get like now this one, I got a positive. Instead of saying favorable, I say what here? Adverse. Because it's what here? It's an exceptional variance. So the gentlemen, I would want to ask for a favor. I'll be uploading this video immediately after this. I'll upload this video on YouTube. And I'll share the link with you. And then I would want you to create time and watch it immediately. You watch it immediately. So that now these formulas can sink in. I've been told that my second uh, lesson is supposed to be, when, when is my second lesson? My second lesson, it cannot be on Monday. If I'm the one taking over, my second lesson can only be on Tuesday. Tuesday at 6 or Wednesday at 6. Or Wednesday at 6. Because tomorrow, remember, I have a far with the physical classes. Wednesday. So Wednesday, 
All right. And then there should be three sessions. I would rather do three short, short sessions instead of two sessions a week. There should be three. I would really love to have three sessions in a week. So if I can do, no, Tuesday 6 is a AFR. I know the timetable. Tuesday 6 is an AFR. So if I can do it, three is perfect, yes. So if I can do a session on Wednesday and Thursday, you come on Thursday, you have to do tags or something. Wednesday is agreed, Mike. Wednesday, perfect, 6 p.m. I'm told Thursday is also okay, but you can have that debate on, I can have that debate where on WhatsApp. I also don't mind being given a class on, say, Monday evening, 10 p.m. to 11. I only want very, I may see my AFM. I may want quite short sessions, but involving questions, in involving engagements, I mean, involving engagements where I'm able to involve you, and then it will be good to go. It will be good to go. It will be good to go. Yeah, like Thursday, 8 to 10, I'm free. Like Thursday, 8 to 10, I'm free. But let's have those discussions where on WhatsApp. And then most importantly, when you get my video on YouTube, you ninjas, you don't even subscribe to my channel. It's only Yvonne and maybe Maura who have subscribed to my channel. All the other guys don't want Morimo to earn anything. You must always subscribe, always comment there. All right. Give me figures there. And of course, give me a thumbs up, Imo. You must support your Malimo. This Malimo should go international. Unlike so many. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think I normally see you. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you so much, Pamela and everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. So see you. I get notifications. Great. Yes, I'll upload immediately. Immediately. Actually, let me do it now. Thank you so much. Great people. Now we are together. Now we are together. Now we are together. And I like you from lesson number one. I like you right away. Thank you so much. Bye.